Welcome back, Zergay fans, to another another exhibition match replay. I was about to say another episode of Nan Actually, I could call it that now that I think about it. Anyway, welcome back. We're getting to another exhibition match. My name again is still Dominic or Shadow Fury, whichever you prefer, and we are into 400 versus Merc on his key channel. Merc starting out with a shipyard. 400 starting out with a shipyard. Actually, I kind of like that because the thing with C maps is that they're the only time you really get to see shipyards. And very quick, we're seeing very quick Cutter Hunter with some Sea Wolf. Actually, Cutter Hunter Sea Wolf into Corsair. Merc has it all planned out. 400, on the other hand, they're playing it by ear. Going for a couple of cutters, figuring out, or Hunter and a cutter rather, figuring out what to do with that. You now, just, just in case Anthbot happens, have the cutter. Just in case anything else for scouting, have. Sorry, Anthbot happens, have the hunter. Just in case anything else happens, have the cutter. Either way, it all works out. But Cutter is going to be putting themselves in a bit of an awkward position as two cutters coming in from Merc will be able to cut through it, no problem. Another hunter is coming up, and at the same time, there's the two cutters disarming out that one hunter. As it always goes, that's the thing with cutters. They are a disarm a disarm unit. Although the one cutter coming in here actually could be fine. The hunters. Ah, the hunter does go down. I was about to say the one cutter was disarmed, but unfortunately, for 400, Merc microed that really well, got the cutters out of there, and eh, did some scouting. I mean, that's all that really matters. Same time, also got rid of 400's hunter. So a nice opening for Merc getting a few hunters out themselves and getting into a reasonably strong position militarily. On the other hand, 400 immediately going over to Sea Wolves. I think they think that they're going to be dealing with a lot of cutters, which they are. But Merc has already thought of that. They do have Sea Wolf of their own along with a couple of hunters. So the Sea Wolf coming in for 400 is not going to be able to do much. Merc really on top of knowing what their opponent is likely to do. And again, this is an early build in. Like Merc just queued this up as soon as the game started. So it's not like Merc is going to be all that like it's not like Merc was thinking oh yeah just react to it this is Merc understanding the meta of C play I'm really impressed to see that that being said there is still a bit of a positioning issue here these two the cutter and hunters somewhat separated and all of them are not stopping the sea wolf coming in here however an urchin is prepared alongside of Merc's sea wolf so there is going to be a dead sea wolf coming in here for 400 while the harassment goes on in the main base, I'm not sure if 400 Quest realizes just how much Merc has invested in their military, but it's a lot. And it's going to be enough to basically stop anything that goes at them. I mean, Merc essentially completely safe. 400, on the other hand, is having a bit of a tough time maintaining any position economically. Merc expanding at the same time, so Merc is just going to be building up and building up and building up. And there's not much 400 can really do about that. Now, they're metal extractors. They have potentially more metal extractors over the northeast, which I imagine they'll be taking fairly soon. They have a... They have a Corsair to deal with, but that's not a big deal because the Seawolf is already in play in 400. They have one Hunter, but it looks like there's going to be a bit of a flank coming in here from Merc. They can get behind the Corsair. The Seawolf can take out the Corsair, at least slow it down. But no, the rest of the units are completely out of position. Instead, not going for that, going to check out the economy while the Seawolf... Actually, not check out the economy, take out the Mariner. Never mind, actually, they're very good move coming in here from Merc. Did spot that Mariner right at the edge of the map. A little bit tricky, it was kind of hiding behind terrain, but still got spotted at the cost of a Sea Wolf. I would say an absolutely worthy trade for Merc right now. 400 being slowed down in their own expansion attempts. And Merc knows full well what's coming in. They know this Corsair is coming, but Merc has their own Corsairs already in construction. And those Corsairs, that is a really good choice. I mean, these Hunter Cutter will be destroyed by the Corsair. Sea Wolves obviously wouldn't be able to last too long, as we saw already, but that doesn't really matter. Because, I mean, it's kind of rock versus rock with the Corsairs, and it's rock versus wet tissue paper with the other two units. So these Corsairs, yeah, Merc's got this. Like, I, I must say, Merc has, has got to been playing a lot of Sea games, because just the way they're playing this, it's, it's clear that they really know what to do. Which kind of betrays their rating, because, I mean, now, they're slightly lower rating, but I guess it's one of those things where sometimes some players are really good at understanding a particular domain of the game. Like, getting to the highest level requires an understanding of basically every domain of the game. Like, how to deal with vehicles, bots, air, sea, all that stuff. But if you have a solid understanding of one of them, as Merc clearly does, then it becomes a lot easier to at least attain, well, goldish rank. I think it's giant rank, is what we call it. Just because, at least on those maps, you're going to have a very good time. As Merc has been this entire game, their attrition is ahead. Their unit composition is 
far more suited to the situation. And at this point, 400 going hard for the Corsairs. Pure Corsair. I mean, okay, sure, they'll get rid of their opponent's Corsairs if Merc is not careful. But Merc's got Seawolves. Merc just needs to go forward with this. The only downside right now for Merc is they don't actually have vision. Which, to be fair, is true of 400 as well. 400 does have a radar, but neither player really has forward vision of what's going on. Or forward radar, for that matter. Although, that being said, Merc... Oof, losing a Corsair. That's where I was talking about the forward vision. It's really important, and Merc not able to have it means they do lose a Corsair without getting anything in return. But again, the rest of their army is well-suited to getting rid of the Corsairs. Mana, however, be as well-suited to getting rid of Sirens. This one will be another minute or so. And it'll, it will only take about 20 seconds for these Seawolves to get in a position to take out the remaining Corsairs from 400's force, which I don't think 400 was quite expecting. Now, the one question to me is, what is Merc going to do? The Sirens are coming up. Are they going to go for Mistrals? Are they going to go for... Uh, I and mean, Seawolves wouldn't really work because of the anti-sea capabilities of Sirens. Or anti-underwater capabilities of Sirens. I'm just thinking, what else do they have as options? Because I'm honestly never entirely sure what to do against Sirens, other than take advantage of the fact that they're a single heavy expensive unit and either go for Mass Cutter or go for a lot of just firepower. Like Corsairs or Hunters, stuff like that. But it may not matter, though. We have Murr coming in here. Should be able to take out both of these Urchins without too many issues. And with that, it's going to be a nice, clean kill. Only one Seawolf going down at the cost of this entire expansion. Does not kill the Mariner. Does, however, spot the Siren. So Merc will know exactly what to do to deal with that. And unfortunately, though, Merc is going to lose these Seawolves in the process of trying to escape. That Siren, it's just out of range. One Seawolf lives to tell the tale. Tell everyone, hey, what's going on? But it's still a question of what is Merc going to do to try to counter this? Besides, not run away the Seawolf. Okay, never mind. They are running away the Seawolf, but what are they going to do to counter this? Like, do they have... Are they planning just Mass Corsair? Just deal with the fact that, yes, Sirens do deal a lot of damage, but if you Mass Corsair, it's not a big deal. Are they going to go in with... Well, Seawolf seems to be thinking... Mistral! There we go. Okay, it's, that's what I expected. Drop the Mistral's on there. Generally good choice. Will outrange the Siren. And it looks like... Merc, are you trying to sneak in? You're trying to sneak in! You're trying to sneak in, take out the Corsairs from behind, and this is going to work, actually. The Siren's not in position. The Corsairs are really out of out of source. That was really smart coming in by Merc. I mean, they are going to lose their so Seawolves in the process, but still taking out a couple of Corsairs for that, while the rest of the Corsairs get in position. So softening up the force before the Corsair is able to get in there, start taking out the Siren. Corsair coming in from 400 does get on the Siren. Has no chance here getting taken out by a bunch of Corsairs, by four Corsairs, and an amazing bit of microplay coming in from Merc. Just knowing exactly how to deal with their opponent's positioning and eliminating it only with two Sea Wolves lost. Now, Siren and two Sea Wolves, that's about. Sorry, Siren and two Corsairs, that's a thousand metal down the drain, into the drink, that Merc has managed to get on their opponent. And another raid comes in, however, not quite as effective. But now, we'll switch over to Hunters coming in from 400. As 400, again, their entire game plan seems to largely be focusing on single unit compositions that are directly countering what Merc is doing right now. Very reactive. Merc, on the other hand, they are reacting a little bit, but mostly they're going for a solid base composition of Seawolf and Corsair. With that, they can pretty easily deal with a lot of these small ships with the Corsairs, and the Ser Serpents can deal with other Corsairs well and help soften up forces. So, a strong combination is coming in here from Merc, and honestly, Merc's army value at this point is... It's pretty high. I mean, their economy is basically on par. Army value is 1,000 ahead of 400. And it has been consistently ahead this entire game. Just, like I said, very good attrition. They're 2,000 metal up on attrition. They're several, just getting ahead on expansion as they're consistently raiding. The Corsairs getting rid of the last urchin. One of them does get on the process, but that's fine. It's worth it for three metal extractors. Unfortunately, this one got a little bit out of position. Going down in two... 2v1s in a row. Last Corsair in a duel at a disadvantage, having already been softened up, but it may not matter. The Seawolves do come in to follow up and get revenge for their fallen comrades, as they certainly will if they go for these Corsairs. This Corsair group, again, completely undefended underwater as 400 does not have any Hunters or Seawolves of their own. And there are the Hunters immediately trying to build up to deal with this. 400 at least does have some reclaim to work with, but it's not much. Ultimately, 15 metal per second will only get you 
of only so many like, like one hunter every 10 seconds not gonna be enough to deal with the force coming in here there's not gonna be enough considering that merc is consistently building more and more forces consistently setting up actually now into envoys getting their artillery going because they realize you know what we can't raid but you know what we can do we can bombard from afar and anything tries to stop it it's not gonna help Barnard's commander goes down as well as the Seawolves completely wipe out 400's last bit of storage. Wipe out a bunch of their economy. I mean, drop them down to 13 metal per second. At this point, it's practically just rude. And 400, I don't really know what you're going to do here besides one last ditch effort to counterattack. Like, it's the one thing going for them right now is that Merc did switch over to Envoys and may have done so a little prematurely. Hunter Corsair Mix will be able to kill off the Envoys, and there isn't a whole lot to deal with it. The Corsairs are coming in, but Merc's first Corsair is going to be caught out. The Envoy as well. There's at least one Urchin, but Merc is playing this very lightly. 400 could actually get a nice revenge shot here. Again, this is kind of the last attempt. This is the last stand. If 400 loses this force, it's going to be game. But Merc, it might not matter. 400 going in for the worker trying to, or the constructor trying to stop it from building anything. Unfortunately, not finding all that much value as a result, and the envoys at the same time making the rest of the unit's life miserable. Hunters, however, because they split off from the Corsairs, that means the Seawolves are going to be completely fine. The envoys got rid of a couple hunters, the Corsairs got rid of the rest. The remaining Corsairs on 400's side come just, just dead. There's nothing they can do. The Seawolves will destroy them, and the envoys remain intact. From here, Merc can just march right into 400's base, start wailing down on it. And there's not a whole lot that 400 is going to be able to build in time to stop the force that's coming at them. Again, this one Corsair is the only thing really providing any kind of resistance. And even then, it can only go so far when it's got all this resistance. The two envoys, the Corsair of Mercs, and all the Sea Wolves just wiping it out without even being counterattacked. Merc is preparing. They are ready. They can go in for that final assault. And it's just a matter of when. When do they feel confident? They're continuing to build up their forces, getting more envoys, getting more sea wolves, getting a few more mariners as well. But of course, the question remains, like, when are they going to attack? Because the longer they wait, the more 400 does get a bit of a force. And admittedly, it is only hunters. And with the Corsairs, it's not going to be a major threat. But for me, it largely comes down to whether or not those hunters are positioned correctly. These sea wolves, again, are going to have a problem just because of positioning. Getting a little bit ahead of the Corsairs, they do take a lot of damage. Fortunately, they are managing to get back into position no pro- Wait a sec. Hang on, is Oh, huh. I didn't realize that, but the Seawolves are close enough to the surface of the water because of how shallow this map is. They're actually bumping into the Corsairs. I did not expect that. I also thought they actually would go down, go under the Corsairs. It seems like that's what they were doing, but I suppose not. But regardless, Merc going in for that final assault. The Hunters finding very difficult time trying to deal with the Corsairs coming in from Merc as Corsairs from 400 aren't really able to get a counterattack. I mean, nothing get rid of the Seawolves. The Seawolves get rid of the Corsairs. The Hunters are being torn apart by the Envoys. And if the Corsairs for, for Merc get in range, unless 400's Corsairs can counterattack, it's going to be over. But a lot of going to get out of Micro. Seawolves are a little bit off, but the Hunters go forward in, ahead of the Corsairs, meaning they're completely destroyed. Two of the Seawolves go down in the process, but all the Hunters die. That leaves the remaining Corsairs from 400 wide open with nothing to counter them. No Urchins, no Hunters, no Sirens. 400 desperately trying to reclaim their way back into this game, but with Envoys on all sides and Seawolves ready to tear apart their base, the only thing that's stopping it is the Urchins. And even then, the only Urchin on the map is right or the only merchant here for 400 is right here and there is plenty vulnerable besides that urchin and there's plenty vulnerable outside of the urchin's range oh seal blue pointing out in the chat that the that sea wolves will always be slightly close to the surface and will be vulnerable to aoe from things like wheat leekos and it's only seafloor the seafloor is only for amp bots Fair point. I guess I just figured the Seawolves would be a little bit lower or dive or be under their opponent's units. Or at least their own units. For the same of other sea units. But I guess I was wrong. As it stands, though, the Seawolves are still doing a fine job. The only problem right now is that 400 is still expanding beside that. They're, they're not too concerned about the fact that they're being attacked. 
400, making sure they still maintain their metal, making sure they're still rebuilding their expansions, making sure they can still have armies being constructed, because at this point, attrition is still in favor of Merc, but 400 is managing to get rid of a few of the units here and there. Merc having switched over to air, as we can see here, a massive air switch coming in from Merc, which still pretty much means Merc is likely to seal this fairly soon. But 400, they don't know that, and they do see that their opponent's forces are being thinned out over time. So I think the thinking is that 400 might be able to take out Merc's forces just with a nice little push. As long as they, they themselves have a strong enough economy. And to be fair, 400's economy has maintained strength. But it looks like it's not strong enough. 400 realizing there's little they can do. And instead decides, you know what? It's a good game. Throws in the towel and Merc takes it. And wow! Merc's army value. Even up until the 10 minute mark, and then completely skyrockets, 400 unable to maintain a position. A lot of that being that 400 started losing units, or, well, yeah, Merc started killing units a lot near the end, but really throughout the entire game. It's a really linear unit value lost graph. Mostly it's just that the amount of metal available increased massively for Merc. And again, their use of counterforce, like, their knowledge of what units to use to deal with their opponent's forces, oftentimes in advance of what was going to happen, was what won them that game. Early on, we saw that the Corsair Sea Wolf combo was ready and waiting for the first raids in the Hunters. Or sorry, the Cutter Hunter combo was ready for the first raids. Corsair Sea Wolf combo was ready for the first set of Corsairs as the Cutters came in from Merc and prompted 400 to make Corsairs. And ultimately, Merc just constantly maintained a strong unit composition while 400 went primarily mono composition and paid for it. So that is going to be it for me tonight. Sorry, it's a bit of a shorter stream. I do have an appointment later today. So I had to cut the short, and that's also why the stream is early today. Normally, for those of you who haven't really been watching my streams, normally I will stream at 11 a.m. on Saturday mornings. So I would have started streaming right now, rather than when I did an hour ago. That's normally when I start, unless I have some kind of appointment, which I don't usually on Saturday mornings. But yeah, I do. I am, I am busy. So early stream, YouTube doesn't matter so much because you just get it when the videos get published, and that will happen as usual. So yeah, if you just tuned in, missed the rest of the stream, it's on Twitch. It'll be on YouTube, and if you're watching this on YouTube, then you already watched it on YouTube. It's getting meta now. Goodbye.